Welcome back to Adobe Photoshop CC. In this tutorial, we're going to learn the power of channels, basically masking with channels. So this image here I have open comes from that uh, free online source I explained last time, which is the pexels.com. Here it is. And um, you can download them for free for both uh, personal and commercial use, which is really awesome. So let's go back to Photoshop here. And what we're going to do here is essentially extract the background. This is quite a, a common task in Photoshop where basically we want to extract it. And so we have a nice transparent background and then we can throw in a background color or something to check it out. I just had some red color here as a flat. Um, but basically that's what we want to do. Now we could use the typical uh, tools. You could try, I mean, quick selection would be really hard to select all these little organic little trees. Um, the magic wand tool you could try and select the sky and then you know uh, adjust the tolerance level hold shift you could try doing the select similar but what's gonna happen here is you're gonna get a lot of stuff inside the image here you can see throughout that you wouldn't want especially if we hit Q you can clearly see there's lots of extra junk here so a better way a faster and easier way is to work through the channels now channels are very interesting. Uh, they're utilized for masking purposes, but they're actually the sort of uh, foundation of what the photo is about. If we go to the channels here, uh, this is a RGB 8-bit image here, but we have red, green, and blue as our channels here. Now you might be wondering, why are these in grayscale? Why aren't it this red, green, and blue? Well, if you open up your preferences, you can do that a couple different ways. You can go to edit, go down to preferences, and go to, to general. To open up, it has a hotkey of Control K or Command K on the Mac. Click on Interface, and up in here, there's a little checkbox that says Show Channels in Color. If you check that and click OK, you'll see each of these in the individual sort of colors, kind of like a Ruby Lith that overlay. And once you select a couple of them, you can see how they sort of merge together as the um, uh, the yellow here, and then um, you know each one is sort of a combination. So this is the cyan here, if you select these two. So uh, interesting enough, the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black is uh, also you know, located in the channels if you had this set up for printing purposes. If you went to the image mode, you'll see the different sort of image modes you can do. And um, you, know, you have index color, CMYK color right there, lab, there's other uh, channels, uh, bit channels you can do the 16-bit and 32-bit, which gives you a far greater color range. Uh, so you have lots of ways of dealing with channels. It's a very important area. But in terms of masking for Photoshop, it's extremely powerful. I'm going to show you right now. But we want to bring this back to grayscale. So I'm going to use that hotkey of Control-K or Command-K on the Mac to bring up Preferences, click on Interface, and uncheck the Show Colors, uh, show Channels on Color, then click OK. By the way, that's always uh, by default set to the grayscale. So usually you don't have to do that to bring in the colors, um, you know, to un remove the colors, I should say. Now I already have a blue copy here uh, from the past. I just tried this out myself. So you can kind of see here what's going to happen. We're essentially going to use this as a mask. So what you do is you click through your red, green, and blue channels and try and find the most contrast. Depending on what you're trying to select, you know, you may uh, want to select a particular area and one of these channels might be better depending on what it is that's being photographed. Typically with landscapes, the blue channel has the best contrast range uh, because the blue sky versus the ground here. And so you can click on each of these and just look. The red channel has less contrast. Green is okay, but really the blue channel is the one that has the most contrast. So the way this works, and by the way, this is non-destructive. I'm not destroying this image in any way by doing this. I'm going to grab this channel and drag it to the new folder icon next to the trash can here. I'm just going to drag it down, let it release, and I get what's called a copy of the channel. And this, in this case, is blue copy number two because I already have one here. Now, you can't do adjustments uh, the, like the adjustment layers and add it in here. It doesn't work in channels. But you can use fix adjustments. So under Im image adjustments, we have the levels command here, which has the hotkey of control L or command L. I'm going to bring that up real quick just by hitting Control L. Again, if you're on a Mac, you would hit Command L. And what we're going to do is we're going to essentially try and make this black and white like a mask. And you would do that by adjusting the black slider and the white slider, not the gray slider here in the middle. But what I start off typically is drag the black slider in 
until you start to see uh, some of the darkness happen up here. Um, then I want to add the white, so I'm going to bring the white slider in, and you'll notice what's happening is we're getting a lot of great contrast by working with these two, just bringing them in until you get pretty close to black and white. And that's pretty good right there. Uh, it's pretty consistent throughout. You got nice detail, visible detail on the trees here. There is a lot of white down here, but we're going to fix that in a second here. We're going to go ahead and click OK. Again, this is a fixed uh, adjustment. We can't, you know, it's not parametric. We can't uh, adjust it afterwards. So you, the only option would be to go back in the history here. Now what I'm going to switch to my paintbrush tool by hitting the B key, and you can access it right up here. And uh, what I want is 100% normal, and I want my foreground color to be black. So I'm going to hit the D key, which is the default black and white, and just hit the X key. Make sure black is my foreground color. I'm going to right click in here, anywhere in here. Make sure I have the hard round brush set, so hardness 100%. Size, uh, I want to increase a little bit, so I might drag this up a little bit more until I get an appropriate size. Something like that, around 300 pixels looks pretty good. And basically what I want to do is just paint this out down here. Uh, I want this whole area down below to be black. Now you have to be careful as you go up here. You don't want to go too high up because some of the light is leaking through in the trees here and some of that's really nice. So um, you have to just kind of be aware of that. Now right here I might click and then shift click to uh, make a straight line straight across here just to get that little edge action going on there and get a little bit more of this stuff here. Again, I don't want to go too high up. If I want to reduce size of my brush, just left bracket a couple times. I might get a couple of these little guys here, but uh, this is looking pretty good. I don't think much of the light would touch down below here. Or we would notice it that much. I would say this is probably pretty close, maybe a little bit in here uh, because this is in the distance. We wouldn't maybe see as much light penetrating the trees back here, uh, but a little bit's good. So the way this works to make this into a mask now is you control click or command click on the thumbnail itself. That makes it an active selection. You can see the marching ants everywhere. Then you click on your RGB composite. Just click on RGB here. Click on the layers tab and you can see here the layer. Now I'm going to turn off the ones below just so you can see this in action here. If I click on the square circle here, which is to create a mask, what will happen is I'll mask out the trees, not the sky. I want to do the opposite. So I'm going to hit Control-Z or Command-Z on the Mac to undo that action. What we have to do is first inverse our selection. You can go to the Select menu, go down to Inverse to inverse your selection. Again, it has that great heart key of Control-Shift-I or Command-Shift-I on the Mac. You can also just hit uh, Option or Alt uh, for the Mac on the mask, and that will inverse your selection. I prefer to do that, so I'm going to do it that way. It just saves me a little bit of time. Just hold Alt or Option and click. And now you can see, look at that great detail of the trees there shining through. Now we can turn on this background and kind of see it here. I'll add a new layer to show you how I did that. Uh, again, next to the trash can, just click on the new layer tab. I'm going to drag it below. And uh, what I'm going to do is hit the paint bucket key uh, tool, which has a hot key of G. And again, if you have another tool selected, maybe you have the gradient tool, you just hold the mouse down onto the tool until you get down the paint bucket. And then pick whatever color you want. I have this sort of... Uh, nice cyan here click OK and basically click in the background and now you can see the difference so if we zoom in if there are any areas where you suspect mm, maybe the light wouldn't go through like right here maybe you can click on the layer mask and hit your B key for the brush and maybe reduce the size a little bit but you want to paint in white now so we're gonna hit the X key as you can see white is for the trees there and so maybe I would you know, knock that back. Uh, most of this stuff looks pretty good. This looks a little bit too much, so I might knock back some of that. That's probably some tree shrubbery. Um, back here, it looks like a lot of it's penetrating the trees. I don't think it would get through there so much. So, um, you know, I could come in and clean that up a little bit, especially right along here. So again, any area that you see that you're like, nah, light wouldn't come through here as much, you can go ahead and do that if you if you think mm, maybe light would come through there. You can just hit Control Z or Command Z to undo the last action you did. Uh, but there's a few specs here. I would say, you know, that's probably fine. Um, and so is that there, but maybe not that guy there. So just, you know, again, it's it's more preferential here uh, to kind of see how much that light you want to come through. But again, what a fabulous job of extracting the uh, background from the foreground image here. I mean, we got the sky out from the ground here. 
and all that's done through the power of channels so uh, enjoy ha hopefully you'll uh, learn a lot and try this out in the future in adobe photoshop cc until next time cheers